this week, we'll learn all about gathering information. This week is all about executing those strategies we talked about last week and then digging into your results. In particular, we're going to discuss different types of information, strategically reading through a source, and citations. I also want to briefly remind you of the difference between a search engine and a library database. So a search engine, something like Bing or Google Scholar, is more interested in grabbing everything that's within reach. Quantity is valued over quality. As such, you only get information about a resource that that resource provides about itself. So nothing deeper than maybe scratching the surface. A library database like Academic Search Premier or Web of Science is more focused on providing you with curated information. You have a much greater depth of information about a resource and that quality is valued over the quantity. Databases are also able to hire people to provide this quality information. So why talk about, why think about gathering information? So I think it's important because scholarship is a conversation and thinking about gathering information is helping you enter that conversation. Um, scholarship does happen at many different levels and with many different people, you included, uh, all of whom bring their own perspectives and ideas to this conversation. Um, this also does mean there is a lot of information out there and even after figuring out where you want to do your search, so maybe you found the perfect database, sometimes it can be tricky to figure out the exact right resource. So our next points of discussion are going to focus on figuring out what you're looking at and how to determine if it's the right fit for what you're doing. Part one, we're going to talk about different types of information. So I'm gonna talk about three specific types of information that you're likely to come across when you're searching these databases. We'll talk about popular literature, scholarly literature, as well as trade literature or, or publications. Starting with popular literature, the purpose of popular literature is generally to inform and entertain the general readers. So who writes it? The authorship of popular publications is often journalists or freelancers, and they're often paid for by the magazines that they work for. Very often, these are non-specialists. Coverage for popular literature often includes current events in a field, profiles of people, places, or events, or political opinions. It's often a broad variety of public interest topics, and it's very often cross-disciplinary. Again, the audience is the general population, popular literature for the populace. And examples include Time Magazine, The New York Times, Psychology Today, and Science News. And here is an example of an article found in popular literature. Scholarly literature's main purpose is to communicate research and scholarly ideas. Authorship includes scholars and researchers who are experts in the field. Coverage is often their research. They're reporting on what they're doing, what they're working on. So this is very current information. This also means in a scholarly publication, they can go through the process of peer review where information is vetted by a group of peers, so other researchers in that field before it is published in a journal. The audience is other scholars, researchers, and students. I will say of particular importance is this term primary literature. Primary literature means this is someone's original reporting of phenomenon they have observed. In the sciences, this means experiments a researcher has conducted themselves. In other fields, for example in history, this might be letters written by an author or original correspondence between two people. Again, this is when someone is documenting their original observations of the world around them. Examples of scholarly literature. So, so you'll find examples of these in journals like Journal of American History, Journal of Cognitive Neuroscience, Brain, among others. And here is an example of a scholarly article. 
So finally, we'll talk about trade and professional literature. The purpose is to provide professional support and to apply information. Authorship is often professionals and practitioners in the field. Again, they're reporting out about their experiences in their field. Coverage is news in a particular field, brief reports on research, or opinions about trends and events. And the audience is often, again, practitioners in the field. This is for professional development purposes. Examples include American Libraries, Adweek, Backstage Magazine, Accountancy, and Popular Science. Here's an example of an article in a professional magazine or a professional journal. So each of these resources is valuable and important for different reasons. Popular literature is important in disseminating information to the population about maybe interesting research that's happening. The value of scholarly publications is really among the scientists for quickly disseminating, or relatively quickly, disseminating information about what they're doing in a rigorous and thorough manner. For trade and professional literature, one of the benefits there is really about sharing practices and sharing about what you're doing in a field to help others be more successful. So how do you figure out which resource is which? How do you figure out what type of resource you're looking at? Um, the tips that we've gone over here should help some, but use your best judgment. If you're ever unsure, you can either ask a librarian or you can ask a professor.